Hello and welcome to your British pub guide. I'm going to take you through the basics of what you need to know to feel confident when walking into a British pub. We're going to cover a variety of topics such as typical drinks, barmen will be ready to make for you, common expressions used in and around the pub and an incredibly advanced listening challenge that includes so much slang and colloquialisms it'll hurt your brain. But I think you're up for the challenge. And if you're a geek like me, you might enjoy decoding the dialogues, which I will, of course, be doing for you so that you can feel more comfortable in and around the British pub. This video is sponsored by Lingoda as their next language sprint is on the horizon. So I will be informing you of that in a little bit. But to begin with, let's start by deciding what type of pub you want to visit. Let's roll that really old intro. You're watching Real English with Real Teachers. Real Teachers. Now then, we have a number of different pubs and some of them are going to be disappointing for you because if you are coming from overseas and want to find a pub, it's no doubt because you've been sold the idea of a cosy little tavern in a quaint village with a barman that immediately becomes your best friend upon entering the public house and they shout over, all right, John, having the usual, and you sit down in a comfy chair next to a roaring fire. Well, these traditional pubs do exist, but there are over 60,000 pubs in the UK. And I would say a large majority of those will not live up to that expectation. So, how to find that quintessentially British pub? Well, firstly, don't expect it to be anywhere near tourist spots or generally in the middle of a big city. Your best bet is to go to a small town or village and walk around the place until you find a pub that from the outside looks nice, architecturally speaking, and, and slightly dated, I would say. I would stay away from the high street, meaning the main strip of a town or city, as the pubs you find on these streets will be more lively, being a student pub or a circuit pub, meaning one of, of many that people will hop from, having one or two and then moving on to the next one. These are often chains as well. A chain, meaning there are multiple versions of this, this pub or brand, around the country. And the number one chain pub I can think of in the UK is Spoons or Weather Spoons. It's got about 900 pubs and bars to its name and some would say it's cheap and cheerful, but I would say it's cheap and dreadful. It's uh, very depressing for me when I walk into one of these, uh, but that is because I'm a bit of a snob. So if you're not like me, it might just be your cup of tea. Okay, so let's imagine you found your pub now it's time to learn about what drinks await you. But before you get to wet your whistle, a word from the sponsor. If you're tired of small talk and want to have a real conversation in English, then Lingoda will help you achieve this goal with an intensive online language learning experience with the Lingoda Language Sprint. We have been proudly recommending Lingoda for about two to three years now to all the students that we sadly don't have the time to teach ourselves, as we have personally used their classes to gain confidence with the languages that we have been learning over the years. And as language teachers, we give the learning experience a personal stamp of approval. And uh, we highly recommend their unique concept of this three month language sprint. And the best thing is that Lingoda will pay you back if you attend all of your classes. Many think this is too good to be true or it's a scam, but we assure you it is 100% legitimate and you can get up to 100% cash back when you attend all of your classes within the three month period. And you get free access to the Cambridge Speaking Online Test. I can't quite believe this, but over 35,000 people have participated in the previous Lingoda sprints and it's, it's continuing to just get better and better as a company and a service to language learners. So we highly recommend it. But I will tell you more about the details of how to get involved in this amazing opportunity later in the video. Or you can click the link in the description box below.
What are you having? What can I get you? How can I help? What's your poison? One for the road? There are a number of ways a barman might start a conversation with you, but we will get to that. For now, we need to know what we are ordering, because there's nothing worse than being a foreigner in a pub, umming and ahhing over what to get whilst locals are waiting impatiently and tutting at you as they are wanting to get their order in. Now, I can't speak for everyone, but if you do this, it's not because you're foreign, it's because you're preventing a local from getting their daily intake of alcohol. So let's not waste time and anger the drunks and be ready to order before you get up to the bar. So let's start with the obvious one. Beer, yes, a pint of beer. We have it in pints and half pints. It's a very big amount, isn't it? A pint. A pint. So much liquid. But we always have it in pints and half pints. If you have a half pint, you look like a girl if you're a guy. And if you have a pint, if you're a girl, you look like a guy. No, girls can have pints, definitely. And guys can have half pints. But there is a stereotype attached to them. Do what you want. Live your life how you want to live it. Half pints and pints. That's what I needed to say. Moving on. Give you a little tip here. Never say, can I have a beer, please? A beer is an overarching or umbrella term for many different types of beer. It's kind of like going to an Italian restaurant and saying, can we have three dishes of food, please? You've got to be more specific than that. Where to start? I'm definitely not an expert with this, but from doing a little bit of Googling, I can say to start with, we will talk about cask ales. And these are um, the ales that are on the pumps. At the front of the bar, you have the big pumps and you will have traditionally the cask ales, which are known for being more natural and deeper in their flavors as they are brewed in more organic ways. And the bartender will pull a pint for you if you ask for an ale. So that is a phrase, to pull a pint. Can you pull a good pint? Hey, can you? I can't. I always end up having too much froth or head at the top of the beer. You look foolish if you pull a poor pint. It's not good. But more importantly, here are the top 10 ales sold in the UK um, in most pubs at the moment. And I invite you to Google some of them to better understand their flavors to see if you might like one. I'm personally not a massive fan. My palate clearly hasn't matured. And I used to go for a lager when I was in my teens and, and 20s, which is a more golden, lighter, bubbly type of beer that is kind of close to a Pilsner, if you've had one of them before. And again, here are the top 10 lagers on sale at the moment in British pubs. My personal opinion is that uh, Carling and Foster's are similar to drinking a pint of piss, meaning very weak. And Carlsberg is okay. Peroni is a more premium beer, which is stronger and generally regarded as a nice lager, as is Cronenberg, which was my preferred poison back in the day. Nowadays though, I, like many, enjoy a craft beer, which come from much smaller breweries and they have a lot of new flavors from their varied brewing techniques. And here are the top 10 most widely sold craft beers. I really like Brewdog Punk IPAs and I would say generally, I like it when an IPA has uh, fruity or, or piney flavors, which come from the usage of hops, which is, which is this plant. If you've never tasted a hoppy flavored beer, then I can't recommend it enough. You either love it or hate it. So we have cask ales, the traditional ales on the big pumps in the, the front of the bar. Uh, we have lagers that are on the tap, which is the slightly smaller uh, looking tray of, uh, of beers. In, on advertisement on the bar. And then we have the craft beers, which are often in a bottle or can and will usually be in the fridge behind the bar, but they are becoming so popular that they take center stage sometimes on the pumps or, or maybe the taps. Not actually sure. Craft beer, anyone? Does anyone know craft beer? Does it come from a pump or a tap? Do let me know in the comments, but it will be obvious because it will be displayed either on the, um, on the pumps or the taps for you to see. 
Oh, we also have stouts. I nearly forgot. Yes, stouts. These are black beers. An obvious example is Guinness, but there are loads of stouts out there. I personally have minimal first-hand experience with them, but it's a world that many people absolutely love. They are described as being like full-bodied um, with a pronounced roasted flavor, often similar to coffee and dark chocolate with like a, a multi-complexity. Um, I mean, that's a lot of adjectives that can be a bit empty without experience. So, you know, drink responsibly, of course, but get down that pub and give them a go. Give them a go. Okay, I got a bit carried away with, with beers there. I was hoping to cover the 10 most popular drinks, but uh, I'll have to save that for another video. Just know that we, we enjoy um, whiskey, we enjoy gin and vodka mixes. Uh, mixes being like gin and tonic or whiskey and coke or vodka lemonade or maybe even a vodka and orange juice. And that one is, a, is also known as a screwdriver. We enjoy cider, and although wine is not something that the UK pride themselves on making, we certainly love consuming it. Most commonly French and Italian wines. We also like Australian and, and New Zealand wines and, and some Spanish ones, um, and, and loads more. But those are the, the top um, imports that we consume when it comes to wine. We do find it a bit weird to have red wine served cold, which I did experience when I went to Pisa a couple of years ago. That was a very odd experience for me. And occasionally people will also ask for a spritzer, which is a white wine with a dash of soda water or carbonated water or even lemonade. But yes, our red wine is served at room temperature and white is nicely chilled. And very quickly, here are the top 10 cocktails we order at a pub in descending order. Number 10, Bloody Mary. Number nine, Martini. Number eight, White Russian. Number seven, Long Island Iced Tea. Number six, Aperol Spritz. My girlfriend Stacy likes an Aperol Spritz. Number five, Margarita, a margarita. Number four, Negroni. Number three, Espresso Martini. I just tried that one recently. I quite like it. Keeps me awake, obviously. Number two, Pina colada, pina colada, not a kina palada. That would be crazy. Not a kina palada. Who would say that? A pina colada. And the last one, apparently the most common cocktail to be served in the UK is a mojito. Mojito. We don't say mojito. We say mojito. Mojito, no? Okay, so those are the cocktails. Moving on. Now, to know how to order these beverages and find out about more cultural behaviors and to better understand the mindset of a Brit in a pub, I'd like to point you in the direction of my new podcast, which is called The British English Podcast. And you can go to the correct podcast episode page at the end of this video and in the description box below. Right, I feel like you are ready for some expressions. I hope you've been enjoying the language I've been exposing you to in this video with the pop-up definitions. But here we have some pub-related expressions for you to get used to. Now, before getting to a pub, you might be asked or you might want to ask somebody to go with you. Native friends might text using this kind of language. All right, mate, fancy a pint? Or, all right, mate, cheeky, cheeky drink? or even a basic, all right, mate, wanna grab a beer? And as you can see on the screen, these are some typical uh, real life uh, responses because my friend actually thought I was um, inviting him to go for a pint. Sadly, I wasn't. And then nearer the time, uh, you might text them saying, you down the pub yet? You down the pub yet? You down the pub yet? Or even if you're running late, you could say, mine's a Stella. And that's meaning I'm not there yet, but if you are before me, then please buy the first round of beers and I will have a Stella Artois. We'll talk about rounds in a second. And not that you will necessarily need to know this word when at the pub, but the customer, you, you are known as a punter, a punter. And if you come a lot, you are a regular and maybe even a local, but you've, you've got to be going there quite a lot and 
you know, be living near the pub to become a local. All right, the staff are known as the publican, and that is the manager of the pub. Then you have the barman or bartenders or even bar staff. And um, in a busy or heaving pub, you'd also have staff who go around collecting the empty glasses. And uh, I don't know how they got their name, but they are called glass collectors. Moving on to happy hour. Happy hour! This is a marketing term that indicates a period of time when drinks are discounted. Often it is two drinks for the price of one, and it's sometimes more than just one hour of happiness. And then between friends at the table, uh, we buy drinks in what we call rounds, meaning one person buys everybody a drink. And you might hear in a group, of, of friends, you might hear, whose round is it then? Your round, innit? You got a round in yet? Right lads, my round, who's having what? Oh, get your orders in, Harry's heading to the bar. And a phrase I always fear hearing is, let's get some shots, yeah, let's get some shots, yeah. Call me a party pooper, but I'm done. I don't want shots anymore. I'll have a pint, leave me alone. But yeah, if you like shots, go crazy. Shots, the little little drinks of spirits that will make you regret whatever happened that night. Okay, so that's some language for you around the pub. I don't want to give you too much because otherwise you'll get overwhelmed. We don't want that, do we? Uh, but we'll move on to the advanced listening challenge. <laughs> You're in for a linguistic treat. You are. And before we get to it, let's hear the details of the Lingoda language sprint. So, if you want three months of English lessons and then a chance for 100% of your money back, listen up. If you didn't know, Lingoda is the number one trusted European language school with a, a German stamp of, of, of quality. You know those Germans, they like good quality stuff. Well, they've got that German stamp of quality, but it's very affordable. Even if you don't manage to attend all of your classes and get all of your money back, you will only end up paying 10 euros for a small group class with a maximum of five students, which is incredibly reasonable. You'll be learning from native speaking teachers in small online classes available 24 seven with proven methods and expert designed curriculums that deliver real results. And um, here are the next Lingoda language sprint details. What day does it start? January 15th, 2021. And when can you sign up until? December 28th. Now they give you two levels of intensity to choose from. One is called the super sprint and the other one is the sprint. I'll show you the details now, but the main difference is the super sprint is more lessons and more money back. So if you like to go big, then this one is for you. You can join the Lingoda language sprint in English, German, French, Spanish, and business English. Sign up requires a 49 euro deposit and each plan will be paid in three month installments. But if you use our voucher code WIN17, you'll save yourself a cheeky tenner on that deposit. Now, here's the main one. Lingoda will refund your tuition fee in full together with the deposit if you attend all required classes. But do hurry up as places in the sprint are limited. Here we are. We have arrived at the advanced listening challenge. Hallelujah. 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 So this was pulled from a book by Kate Fox, who is a social anthropologist. And it uh, really makes me actually want to go into pubs and record real audio for you guys, because what she got was amazing. Okay, so I'm going to set the scene for you. It's a busy Sunday lunchtime in a local pub. A few regulars are standing at the bar where the publican is serving them, the manager, the publican. So two at the bar, two customers, punters, regulars at the bar and one publican, okay? The publican places a pint of bitter in front of regular one. A bitter, I said bitter, bitter is an English pale ale. So the regular who received the pint hands over the money and then a conversation continues. Good luck. Where's meat and two veg then? Don't know, mate. Should be here by now. Must be doing a Harry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put one in the wood for him then. And yourself? 
Yeah, I'll have one for Ron. Thanks. Oh, did you understand that? <sighs> Gonna admit something here. I'm, I'm not sure how they used the Ron. Could have been different, but yeah. I want you to pause this video and write your attempt to paraphrase that conversation in the comments below and then resume playing this video. You can listen back to it a couple of times, try to try to get a better understanding of the, the general gist of the conversation. So come back to resuming this video after you've done that. Okay, it was hard. Meat and two veg, I should say, it's a, um, a person's nickname. So from not knowing that, it's probably hard to, but given the context, you should be able to figure out at least that it is a nickname. You might not know the meaning of it, but you understand that it's a nickname, right? And I'll explain the meaning of it in a second. Um, doing a Harry, in this group of friends, uh, it means getting lost because this person that, that, that they're talking about is called Harry and he often gets lost. So you can play with this in, in many ways actually. If you are known for doing something, your friends could say, oh, she or he is doing a and then your name. So for me, uh, Stacy, my girlfriend, she always thinks that I faff, I organize, apparently I do. I, I tidy too much needlessly. So you could say faffing, I faff, I organize too many things. Um, so if I'm doing that and I'm late for some reason, Stacy could say, oh, he's doing a Charlie. He's doing a Charlie again. Get out the door. Get out the door now. Okay. But obviously the person that you're talking to needs to know that you have that characteristic, does that make sense? Okay, the next phrase, put one in the wood for somebody. Can you guess it? Mm. It means to bill me now for a drink and reserve that drink for that person when they are ready for it to be poured. So let's, let's run that again and see if you understand it uh, with those three phrases better understood. Where's meat and two veg then? Don't know, mate. Should be here by now. Must be doing a Harry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put one in the wood for him then. And yourself? Yeah, I'll have one for Ron. Thanks. How was that? Hmm. If you haven't yet, um, comment below with your attempt to paraphrase that scene and I will give you a heart if you get it right. Oh, and the nickname, uh, meat and two veg, uh, I thought it was genitalia, male genitalia. That's what we often call it, not often, sometimes. Um, at least that's my knee-jerk reaction to that, that phrase, uh, meaning my instant thought, my knee-jerk uh, reaction. But it can also, apparently, it can also mean boring. And it's coming from the idea that this is our dullest, most unimaginative dish in the UK, meat and two veg. I quite like it, meat and two veg. Oh. Boring, boring. If you wanted more of that decoded, then you can grab the worksheet I made for this video, which is in the description box. Check out podcast episode two, all about British pubs, on uh, my new baby called The British English Podcast. And one more thing related to Lingoda, in order to help you with your progress, they have a small present for you, which is a habit tracker. This will be sent to you via email once you sign up. I mean, look at that. Lingoda are even handing out early Christmas presents. And perfect if you like to do New Year's resolutions. So let's try to put 2020 behind us and make 2021 a better one. The year you made a significant change to your life, starting it by gaining that speaking confidence in English. I hope you found this video useful. Subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time on Real English with Real Teachers. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram to get more day-to-day -day posts and stories helping you learn English in more dynamic and interactive ways.